and welcome to this video. This video is the first in a three part series on Mesh Fusion in Modo. In this video, I'll be going over what Mesh Fusion is, what it does, and why you would use it. Okay, so what is Mesh Fusion? Mesh Fusion is Modo's own non destructive subdivision surface Boolean system, which allows you to create really complex models quickly and easily without having to worry about how your base mesh is being edited. But how is that different from traditional Boolean workflows? Well, normally when you apply a Boolean, the hole that you've made or the geo that you've added is there permanently. If you decide that you want to move the placement of the Boolean, you would need to fill the hole or delete the additional geo and then start again. This can become really tedious, especially when working on a project that's been iterated on or is collaborative. With Mesh Fusion, you can still create holes and add geo, but everything is non-destructive meaning that you can continue to move your fusion items even after a fusion has been made. Unlike normal booleans, Mesh Fusion also allows you to use geometry to drive embossings and also edit the smoothness or weight of the surface strips that join your two meshes. This means that you can really fine tune your fusions to get the exact look and feel that you want. Now that we know what Mesh Fusion is and what it does, let's take a look at the UI. Mesh Fusion can be found under the Fusion tab of the menu to the left of your viewport. In this menu, you'll be able to see everything that Mesh Fusion has to offer. In this video, I'll only be going over the most important parts of Mesh Fusion and what we'll be using heavily for the later parts of the course. For more in depth information on Mesh Fusion and all of its functions, head over to learn.foundry.com forward slash modo. Moving on, the Mesh Fusion UI was actually overhauled in Modo 15.1 to make Mesh Fusion more intuitive to use. The menu is laid out in the order that you would set up and edit your fusions. The first button is Fusion Ready Presets. Pressing this button opens a window with a list of pre made geo that's been optimised and is ready to use with Mesh Fusion. Fusion Ready Presets are configured so that they're quad only geometry, as that's the kind of mesh that works best with Mesh Fusion. However, Mesh Fusion can be used with regular geo, as well as curves and procedural models, so don't feel limited by what's in that list. But it is recommended that you keep tries to a minimum or use quad-only geo when working with non-Fusion ready preset items. The second button in the menu is New Fusion. Whenever you want to create a new fusion, press this button and your mesh will become a fusion item. The fusion item is the geo that will have all your operations applied to and will eventually become your finalized mesh. When pressed, a new fusion item will become available in your items list and you'll notice that your model has increased in subdivision levels and is now shaded differently. Next, we have our mesh rolls. This is where all the fun stuff happens. So there are two kinds of mesh roll, trims and surface strips. Trims are how you combine or remove geometry and there are three kinds that you can use. Apply primary, apply subtractive and apply intersect. Apply primary is used to join two meshes together while Apply Subtractive is used to cut holes in your geometry. Apply Intersect creates a mesh where two pieces of geo overlap. Modo then removes all the sections of the two pieces of geo that don't overlap. Now that we know what fusion rolls are, let's take a look at surface strips. While surface strips can be driven by curves or geometry, they're best used in tandem with curves or text to create embossings, but they can also be used to add or remove geometry. The three kinds of strips available under the mesh roll menu are two-sided subtract grid, one-sided subtract, and one-sided intersect. Two-sided subtract grid creates a two-sided surface strip on your fusion mesh, but does not add or subtract any geo to or from your fusion item. One-sided subtract removes the mesh item from the fusion item where the two intersect and then leaves a single-sided surface strip at the point where the two intersected. One-sided intersect removes the fusion item where the mesh item interacts with it. Like one-sided subtract, intersect creates a single-sided surface strip at the point where the mesh and the fusion item intersected. Unlike apply subtractive and apply intersect, one-sided intersect and subtract do not fill in the hole left by the removal of geo. To apply any of these operations to my fusion item, I will need to select the source mesh of my fusion item and the geo that I want to apply an operation to and then press the button of whatever operation I want to apply. A really cool thing that we introduced in the Modo 15 series is that I can now just double click my fusion item in the viewport to select my source mesh and then hold down shift and double click the boolean geo to select both before applying my operation. In previous versions you would need to select your meshes directly from the items list 
but this just speeds up the workflow and also makes things a bit easier to manage. Once the operation is applied, you can continue to move, rotate, rescale, and deform the mesh item as you want, and all changes will be reflected in the final fusion item. Once a fusion item has been created and a fusion is applied, you'll notice that you have thin black lines where the two pieces of geo are joined. These are surface strips. Surface strips can be used to manipulate how smooth or sharp a join is, the size of the join, and can also have weights added to them. Surface strips can be selected by double-clicking the strip that you want to edit in the viewport and then ticking override defaults in the properties tab. From here, you can edit the width of a surface strip as well as how flat or curved it is and how dense you want the strip to be. So, going back to the Fusion tab, there are a few more functions that I want to talk about. First is Trim and Untrim. These are used for times when you have two fusion operations that intersect with the fusion item, but not with each other and you want them to. Trim allows you to select the two mesh items you want to interact and then drive a fusion between the two. So for example, I have this box subtracting Geo from my fusion item, while the sphere is adding. However, they're not interacting with each other, so the sphere is still adding Geo where there should be none. The double click method also actually applies to selecting meshes that have already had fusion operations applied. But instead of double clicking visible pieces of mesh, I just need to double click the patches that were left behind by the fusion operation. Patches are actually pieces of geo that are created when a fusion occurs and are outlined by surface strips so they're fairly easy to identify. So, if I want to trim this geo, all I need to do is double click my sphere, hold down shift, and then double click the patch that was left behind by my box. And as you can see, both of my mesh items have been selected and are now visible in the viewport. Now that both my mesh items are selected, I can press trim and now my extra unwanted geo has been removed. Now, if I decide that I don't want that operation applied anymore, I can select those two mesh items and then press untrim. This removes the operation. The next button is clear mesh roll. This one is fairly self-explanatory and it removes the roles assigned to the current mesh selected. So if you decide that you want to subtract something instead of add it, you can select the mesh and then unassign the subtraction role that was assigned to it. Another thing in Mesh Fusion that's a really good thing to be aware of are the viewport shading presets. These basically allow you to change how your 3D viewport reacts with Mesh Fusion specific items and are incredibly useful when it comes to getting finer control over how your Fusion items interact with each other. The two most useful ones to be aware of are AVP Topo Shaded and AVP Topo Shaded Wireframe. When enabled, AVP Topo Shaded gives you a shaded view without a wireframe of your Fusion items, while only showing a wireframe of the items that you may have selected. AVP Topo Shaded Wireframe, on the other hand, keeps the wireframe visible while also giving a shaded look to your mesh. With either of these enabled, you can also adjust the opacity of your selected mesh with the Polygon Opacity option. This is a really useful thing to have on hand and utilize as it means you can select your source meshes and make really fine grained changes in the position, size or rotation of your source meshes without a solid item being in the way, allowing you to see as you're editing how your final fusion item will look. The last thing that I want to give a quick rundown of are some of the options available in the Fusion Utilities menu. There's a lot of stuff in here, but the most important thing that we need to be aware of for this course are the Duplicate As options. These options allow you to duplicate source meshes and apply a mesh roll to them as they're duplicated. This is especially useful if you're working on something with a repeated pattern or using text to apply logos or decals in multiple places. The Duplicate As menu also gives you the option to duplicate your mesh as a mesh item, meaning that no mesh rolls are applied to it and it doesn't interact with your fusion item. Okay, so now that we've had a look over the most important parts of mesh fusion, the next two videos on this course will go over how mesh fusion can be used to create the mid and outsole portions of this shoe. The workflow will utilize all the tools that I've gone over in this video, so make sure to watch those to find out how mesh fusion works in practice, not just in theory. For more information on Mesh Fusion and Modo, check out learn.foundry.com forward slash Modo to take a look at more tutorials and the user guide.